Welcome back to the Office Park. We're out here once again for another video. And today I want to talk about latency. A lot of people are choosing to go from DJI to Walksnail, from DJI to HD Zero, or they're picking out their first digital system and deciding between those three primary digital systems. Can you feel the latency advantage with HD Zero versus DJI? HD Zero has the lowest consistent latency, which it does, and DJI has the best image quality, which I can say confidently it does. So it really isn't about answering those two questions, it's about the feel of both systems. And I know Kmart FPV recently released a video where he went through the same thing. In isolation, when I fly DJI, I really don't notice the latency. It feels good, it's very confidence inspiring, especially when you get into scraggle like these trees right here, but there's a lot of small branches, you can see a lot. And so you're pretty confident going into those situations, knowing that you're gonna be able to fly through it. HD zero, because it has slightly less resolution, can cause some issues where you see a ninja branch. Uh, what a ninja branch is for FPV pilots is a branch that only appears when you're like this close to it. And you really can't take avoiding action, you just kind of hit it and have to recover from it with your piloting skills. Yay for being a good pilot. <laughs> The one place where I did notice the latency, and it was here, I'm gonna to try to find the footage. If I have the footage, it's gonna be included here. If I don't have the footage, I'm just gonna tell you the story. A few weekends ago, I was here flying my HD Zero quads, giving them kind of a first flight. I did a long range flight, a few other little, uh, just kind of test flights, feeling out the system. And on those first flights, I kind of expected to notice a night and day difference, and I didn't. It felt good, it felt hooked up, it felt locked in, but I didn't perceive a difference between DJI from what I had remembered from previous days flying and what I was experiencing in that moment with HD Zero. This is where it changed. I then landed my HD Zero quads because I had finished out all the 4S batteries, I was only flying the little Grinderino, and I switched over to my bigger quad which uses O3. Bigger motors, more powerful, 6S, Everything about this is a snappier, faster quad. I flew all the way down this little section right here. I did like a little hook turn around some trees at the end and something felt loose and Kmart FPV said very similar, something felt broken. Uh, I actually turned around, flew back, landed and double checked in my uh, goggles that I was on the low latency setting, which in the case of the goggles too is 100 frames per second. I had the resolution at 4K. I was convinced that I was in a non-low latency mode because something felt off. It felt loose, it felt disconnected, it felt like when I pushed the stick to turn in and hook, it wasn't. Like there was almost like a little bit of a delay. And that right there I noticed, because again it was in the low latency mode, back to back it is 100% evident. If you go from DJI to HD Zero, it feels confidence inspiring, it feels locked in, it feels sharp. And this is pretty consistent. I've tried a couple of times switching back and forth between the two. So if you A, B comparison, that difference is very noticeable, even to me, who's a fairly new pilot. In my best way to demonstrate the latency overall for these systems, I'm gonna see if this works. If it doesn't work, this is just gonna be a narrated rip. But I'm first going to fly a Grinderino with the HD Zero Nano 90 in it, set to 9540, so the fastest of the uh, frame, or sorry, the lowest latency setting on the system. Uh, after that, I'm gonna land, I'm gonna switch over to my Grand Arena with the O3 in it and take that for a fly. I'm gonna face you towards my gimbals and try to show you, uh, I'm gonna try to sync up the video so you can see when my stick input happens and when the quad responds to that stick input, which I know is really a test of the control link's latency, but at some level I can't put in an input until I see what I'm trying to avoid. So we're gonna try it, see what it looks like. If it looks like nothing, again, narrated rip. Either way, let me get this plugged in and then we'll get up in the air. Okay, that's my sync pattern. Okay. So I don't know if you can see my sticks. Hopefully you can. But it's just the response from what I can visually see.
to what I see in goggles. So hopefully I can sync this up in a way that you can see this, this difference. Oops, I'm kind of flying like butt right now because my fingers are freezing. But this is, hopefully this shows you like, this feels super sharp. So I've already been flying DJI. So like this feels fantastic right now. This feels like I put an input and it immediately responds how I'm expecting it to. It just feels sharp. It doesn't necessarily feel twitchy, but it just feels, I hate to use the word, it just feels right. So even in here, like all this feels like I'm in control. It feels very predictable. It feels like when I make these turns, it's just locked in. And the same goes with tricks. Like when I do those inverted yaw spins, like I'm doing it on timing. Like I know roughly how long I need to push, where I need to push the sticks to, to get that maneuver correct. And so let's come in, go for a landing. Now that we're back on the ground, I'm gonna switch uh, over to the DJI goggles and fly a quick pack there and see if I can feel, well, no, I know I'll feel the difference, but let's see if I can show you the difference between the two. Ideally, what I'm looking for is if you see the video, I'm gonna to try to slow it down of the controller and my stick input versus what the drone sees, uh, or sorry, what I'm getting back. So this is gonna be goggle DVR in both cases. And so hopefully with everything synced up correctly when it's right here beside me and in the lowest latency, there might be a difference when I'm farther away or behind some objects where when I put in a throttle input, there may be a visible difference between the drones reacting. I'm not gonna be able to find the exact same path. So again, some variances are gonna be there, but hopefully this is not just a narrated rip. Five, four, three, two, one. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. So get in front, you can see my controller. Hopefully we can zoom in enough to see it. But here, we go. See up here, like right here, it feels a little sluggish, so it feels like I'm putting in the uh, that left stick yaw movement, and I'm getting a little bit of delay between when I push the stick and when I see the quad roll. It's very slight. We're talking about like a couple of frames. Uh, so it's like I can still do tricks like that inverted yaw spin, but they just don't feel as sharp and snappy like that. It feels like it's loose. It feels like there's something that's changed in my controller because the drone is almost the same. Like it's near as makes no difference the same. The only difference is this is running the O3 system and the previous drone was running the HD0 freestyle system or HD0 system. Um, I can't say it's better because both have their advantages. Like if I come down here, I can see all of these little scraggly branches in these trees. Uh, even in the goggle DVR, like it's very clear. It's very easy for me to get up here and fly around these trees without fear of hitting branches because I can see them. Uh, and that's not quite the case with HD zero. But that trade-off means that my control stick movements just do not feel as sharp. Well, I couldn't see shit there. Um, so when I'm doing something like that inverted yaw spin or coming out of that dive, when I throttle up at the very end, it just doesn't feel like it's happening when I push the stick 
it feels like there's a little bit of a delay. And so here is where the O3 really shines. Uh, you started to see some breakup when I was just uh, inside that parking garage. I am now on the other side of that parking garage completely by some Wi-Fi, uh, what's it called, Wi-Fi hotspots, and I still have excellent video. So for range Telemetry of penetration. Lost. Telemetry recovered. O3 is pretty unmatched. For resolution, O3 is pretty unmatched. But there just is something about the feel that HD0 is just gets so much better. And I'm actually curious eventually to try the walk snail race mode, if that gets closer to the way HD0 feels. But yeah, all in all, All in all, both systems do feel great. And again, whichever one you choose to fly, it will feel fantastic. The latency is absolutely there, but if you're not flying them back to back, you're not necessarily gonna notice or care. And so if you are flying different quads, like say if you have HD0 quads and DJI quads or analog quads and DJI quads, when you switch between the two, it's gonna take you a minute to get used to that new latency. Cause it's it's not only longer, so it's not only, it takes longer to get the video from your quad to your goggles, it's also not consistent. That's why what I was saying, if you're doing those like inverted tricks or you're doing timing based tricks, uh, where you need to know exactly like how long to give it yaw or how long to give it roll to get the correct orientation, DJI, sometimes that timing changes. And so you do have to kind of either compensate or just accept that you're not gonna be as snappy, as precise, as clean in some of those more timing-based moves. So again, if you care about that, I would highly recommend go look at HD Zero, stick with analog. Those seem to be the best options for those precision uh, type maneuvers. But if you just want the most crystal clear and you're flying in say wooded areas and you need to be able to see every single detail, it's DJI. All day long, there's kind of no way around it. With that said, I hope this did show something because I know Kmart FPV did struggle in his video to show kind of what that difference is and I 100% sympathize with him because it's a feeling. It's something that I can feel between the control sticks, my eyeballs and the drone and it's not something that's easily communicated through video because you can't physically touch the controller, you can't see and feel that time difference. I don't know that everybody is gonna be as sensitive to it and I don't know that everybody's gonna benefit from that lower latency of HD zero, but it's something at least to consider when you're considering, it's something to at least think about when you're considering jumping to a digital system. Neat from the future here. I realized as I was watching back this video that it's a little hard to really see the difference between the two. So I'm gonna put the two videos side by side, HD zero on the left, DJI on the right, with the little uh, stick cam in the bottom corner. And if you focus on that stick cam and see when my thumbs move, you'll see that the quad on the HD zero side moves very quickly after that control stick is moved. On the DJI, you'll see almost like the stick moves and then you'll see the quad react. There's just that slight little additional bit of latency and that's really what I'm trying to communicate. So if you didn't see it in the previous videos or didn't kind of feel from that video of the latency, hopefully this side-by-side -side helps you out. I'm gonna play it again in slow motion and see if that'll help you pick out that difference between the two. It's not a big difference, but I will definitely say if you fly it back to back, it is a very noticeable difference. And that really wraps out the video. There is no right or wrong system. There's only the system that you like best. Uh, obviously pick the one that you like most. I think for me, if I was gonna recommend a system, again, if you were doing a lot of proximity freestyle, you don't have a digital system yet, and you maybe wanna try a couple of different, I think HD zero and those HD zero goggles are fantastic because you can plug in a walk snail VRX, you can use analog. And so you can fly whoops, you can fly big drones, you can fly long range. You have all of the options. If you want that 
fantastic image quality and kind of at no expense. DJI still has the best image quality with that O3 Air unit. Its range and penetration are fantastic. And in isolation, the latency isn't as much of a big deal, especially if you're in those low latency modes, which on the goggles V2 is 120 frames per second. In the goggles two, it's that 100 frames per second mode. Same goes for the goggles Integra, 100 frames per second, either 2.4 or 4K, doesn't make a difference there, but you do have to be in that 100 frames per second. Analog is still a fantastic option. Walk Snail is still a great option with those goggles Xs, which do have the ability to plug in an analog module. I just think if you're looking to get into digital FPV, that HC Zero goggle is a fantastic option to go with because you do have a lot of different ways to fly an FPV drone. With all that said, thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, as always, if you've enjoyed it, like it, please subscribe to the channel. It'll let you know when more videos drop. Hopefully this year I'll be a little bit more consistent. I don't know if you can hear my voice. I've been sick for the last couple of weeks, so it's been a little bit tough to make videos when I can't talk. <laughs> as always, catch you in the next video. Bye. Hopefully this didn't overheat. Fuck. I knew it would overheat. I knew it would overheat. Telemetry lost. Why wow, it gets on so fast? Oh my god, it's steaming. Oh shit. Okay. <clears throat>